Hey guys, what's going on? Moto Drang. This is a quick video on some ideas on how to install aftermarket auxiliary lighting. Okay, so here you have the, uh, this is the finished product. Now I'm going to show you how I did this, uh, but the, the really the, the, the thing to look at here is that uh, we actually, I just sort of molded or made these little brackets to hold these lights. Now they're down at an angle. A lot of times you don't see them like that, but I wanted them down lower so they wouldn't get away in the blinkers. So I'm going to show you how I did this and just some easy ways to do this because the problem I see is that a lot of these expensive auxiliary lights, which these are not expensive, I think they were $12, uh, only slightly better than the old ones I had. Uh, the really expensive ones require that you buy a mounting bracket for your specific bike, and that can be upwards of 100 120 bucks just for the bracket. And so, you know, I just found where on this bike the bracket would go, and, well, let's get to it. So a little tip for this, I can't believe these actually fit perfectly, but they do where I'm going to put it. Uh, these, uh, I got these at Home Depot, so you can go, they're just corner braces, so, um, supposed to be rust resistant, and they come at a, just a 90 degree bend, and this is what we're doing to them, I'm just making them so that the light seats down like that, and the cool thing is, you can actually use the back hole here. To run the wire it fits perfect so i can hide it right behind there it'll install real clean i'm going to bolt it to the end and just run the wire through there so to do this it's real simple uh, i'm actually just going to use a uh, plumber's wrench here this is going to give me the leverage i need to bend this i'm not using any heat i'm not using anything you don't need any special metal like hot work tools to do this so just a couple of clamps this is like a really big clamp i use this guy a whole lot um, but essentially what happens is that when I put the wrench right here, uh, it'll twist this up. So what I do is I just kind of, I just kind of lock it on like that to give me something to brace against. Just until it starts to press down on it, essentially. It should look something like that. And you set your wrench on as close to the bend as possible. And we simply bend up. And you'll have to kind of shape the back around, but it, it totally works. I mean, you can see here, this is a pretty clean twisted bend, you know, if you hold it up. So, cool. Now, I almost can't believe this, uh, how lucky I was. But that sort of standard fitting, which is probably like a three inch by three inch piece of metal or something like that. Already had pre-drilled holes and they fit exactly on these two bolt points here. So that's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> I am gonna have to go get some longer bolts for these. Um, and it is kind of a pain to get to. So essentially um, you have to stick your like finger. There's really not much room to operate behind this. You kind of just got to stick your hand behind here and hold the back end of these. So getting them back on is going to be hellacious, but you can't really ask for a better mounting point. Uh, it's going to put the lights at a slight angle, but it'll keep the turn signals unhindered or uh, unblocked. Essentially, you don't want to block these guys. So, all right. Well, we know what we got to do. Head to Ace Hardware. Okay, we do have a bit of a hiccup. I can't fit the bolt. The one thing that doesn't work is, is this uh, pre-drilled bolt hole. I just need to bore it out a little bit so I can get the bolt that's for the light to fit through there. But you can see how this is gonna fit just like that. It'll kind of come down at an angle, which should be just fine. No problem. Now we test it. Oh yes, perfect. Okay, so I'll get this light bolted on. Show you what it looks like. So there it is. I think that's pretty cool. You can still see your blinker. You got this here. Now it's not hooked up yet. So, you know, I'll 
get this all I'll basically install the other side and uh, then I will take these old ones off and run the wires back and just connect to these and so the primary reason I'm doing this is because these um, these are these Cree really cheap ones I did another video on it um, they're super cheap little lights that you can add on anything uh, they're spotlights and I didn't want a spotlight I thought I did I don't I want shotgun of light that sort of hits all the ground around the front of the bike um, especially on the these uh, non-lit country roads and stuff to really highlight potholes and these Cree lights blink they have a feature that uh, when you hit the switch a certain amount of times they blink and I found that when the battery voltage sort of dips a little sometimes it causes it to go ahead and trip that and start blinking so I'm driving down the road these are blinking I could get pulled over get a ticket that's never fun but anyways uh, the only issue I could see here is that I may have to come back take this off and put in some like padding or something because it could vibrate but I'm gonna tighten it and see if that just fixes it but still I think it looks pretty cool so the lights work I'll go ahead and flick the switch for you so you can see now all I've had to do is splice into the old lights down there uh, one's hooked up right now one's up oh, the battery's not high enough but uh, I'll cut to it and show it here this is with them off with them on. I think that's pretty good. I'll kill the primary lights so you can see it just with those lights. It's quite good. I wanted it to really flood the ground around. There's the auto shut off. Uh, anyways, so I basically just had to take the whole side paneling off and the interior paneling uh, to run the wires. It's really easy on a, on a Tiger uh, 800 or 1200. Two, two, two screws come out here this, uh, this is where you charge your phone, essentially. That just pops out of this tab. And you all the screws, except for the ones that hold the uh, Triumph emblem down there, uh, are the same screws. So it's really quite an easy bike to take apart, actually. All right, now that was a pretty easy one. Uh, however, keep in mind, I'd like you to check out my other video on how I originally installed my older lights. Because that is kind of a time-consuming job, just running the wiring and figuring out where you're going to hide things. That's a whole different story. I already had that all mapped out, so that made that really quick on this change. Most challenging thing was getting the brackets bent how I liked them. So another thing to keep in mind is I have an auto kill switch on this that I used from a remote control car, which basically detects when the battery drops below a certain voltage, it kills the circuit. That way I didn't have to go tapping into other wires uh, that I wasn't sure yeah, I know everyone says, oh, just go to the pub light, go to the this light, go to that. But um, I didn't want to screw anything up. So I just ran another circuit that's fused, and it's got that so I won't drain the battery if I park and leave them on. So uh, that's another video. Check them out. I'll put them at the end of the video. And, well, this is Motodring. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay tuned.